Scott Lucas, political analyst and professor of international politics, Clinton Institute University College Dublin, joins us live from London. Welcome to Vion, sir. Thank you for having me here. What do you think is being expected from this extremely high profile visit, sir? Well, for the sake of appearances, it gives the appearance to Vladimir Putin that someone will still talk to him uh, who is not Belarus or Iran or North Korea. From the standpoint of China, it gives the appearance, which we've seen in recent days as well, with their brokering of the Saudi-Iran dispute, that they are a major political player uh, on a global scale, trying to bring about the resolution of conflicts. But beyond that, I don't think you're going to get any significant move forward, especially on the 12-point Chinese plan, because there is a fundamental here. There will not be peace in Ukraine until one man decides to halt the invasion and to stop trying to conquer his neighbor, and that man is Vladimir Putin. The question will be not if Putin will agree to stop, I don't think he will at this point, but will the Chinese begin to give some pressure behind the scenes for the Russians to actually step back? Because here is the other fundamental. There can be no peace in Ukraine and no peace talks over Ukraine until Russia withdraws its troops from the territory that it seized in 2022 and there is discussion on occupied territory, including Crimea, that Russia has held since 2014. Scott, I also wanted to ask you, China's recent role in Saudi Arabia and Iran, the pact that was signed, it cannot be negated. And it has obviously prompted speculations of a similar, similar role that China can play in the Ukrainian conflict as well. I, you've made yourself absolutely clear that it, there will be no peace in Ukraine until Russia backs off. But how realistic is this reading? If it can happen between Saudi Arabia and Iran, can it not happen between Russia and Ukraine? The, the circumstances were very different, and you're quite right to bring up the cases. But in the case of Saudi Arabia and Iran, each side wanted to get what is still a limited agreement, because after all, they're only restoring diplomatic relations uh, after seven years. You know, they're not establishing an alliance. But the Iranians needed that restoration of relations because they're in deep economic crisis. They're isolated not just because of sanctions, but because of other problems. And Saudi Arabia wanted that agreement because it wants leverage. It does not want to be seen as relying too much on the Americans, too much on the recent breakthroughs with Israel. It wants freedom of action. So China had an opportunity there. It was sort of a, an open goal, as we would say in football. Here you, with Ukraine, you do not have an open goal of Vladimir Putin standing firmly in the way of that goal and preventing anything getting through. Scott. Uh, John Kirby had also shown images of arms coming into Russia from China through the rail route. Now, how do you feel Xi Jinping's visit to Russia is going to be perceived by the West or by the U.S. in particular? Well, I, I think not just the, the U.S., but importantly, the international community, including European countries, uh, including Asian countries such as Australia and Japan. Th they're not surprised by this. I mean, China and Russia do maintain economic links. They do maintain political links. They've done so for decades. Uh, what would be more troubling, and what I think is probably the red line, is if China gave open military support, substantial military support to Russia. Russia's in a very troubled state on the battlefield. It is short of artillery. It has lost most of its tanks. It now faces the prospect of Ukraine getting fighter jets from the West. If China was to come to Russia's, Russia's rescue with armor or jet fighters or to take an open role in the military conflict, then that would be disturbing. But we're not seeing that so far. So I think everybody will be certainly OK with Xi and Vladimir being nice to each other. Thank you for all those updates, Mr. Lucas. It's nice talking to you here. Th thank you.